Welcome to Midlife Matters. I'm Marie, and each week I'm joined by my friends, Julie and Mindy, to talk about all the topics keeping women in the middle years up at night. Today we're talking about how we've changed over the past almost 150 episodes. Whether you followed us from the beginning, or this is your first episode, join us as we discuss who we were then versus who we are now. Let's get started. Listeners, we can't believe we've been coming to you almost every week for almost 150 episodes, and many of you have listened to every one. And like most relationships, you're kind of on autopilot, and then sometimes you look up and you think, wow, a lot has changed, or wow, I didn't realize all we've been through together. So today we thought it'd be fun to talk about the things that have changed in our lives since we started Midlife Matters. Because let's face it, life changes quickly and even two and a half years can bring about situations that look completely different. So Julie and Mindy, let's talk about some of the changes. And Julie, I noticed that your eyes got really big when I said two and a half years because it definitely seems like more time should have passed for all the changes that we've (laughs) experienced, doesn't it? Yeah, it's almost a lifetime of changes in these past two and a half years, it seems. Yeah. I don't know know about you guys, but as I was thinking about this, I thought, who was that person? I mean, (laughs) am I, is it, am I still Mindy? Because I feel completely different. Yes, yes. (laughs) So I think listeners, you're going to enjoy whether you've been listening from the very first episode or you are just a new listener. We'll try to recap as we go along where we were where we are now. All right, Mindy, so why don't you start us off? Why don't you tell us, like, kind of contrast to compare your stage of life now versus when we began? All right. Um, When we first began, I was sitting in a townhouse in Pennsylvania, which was a new move. I had just left my oldest child at college in Chattanooga, Tennessee, had sons then that were a junior in high school, seventh grade, and fifth grade. I had been working part-time at our church in Knoxville, and so I was new to staying at home again after teaching exercise classes and personal training. Um, My husband had taken a new job up north. We were on this great new adventure. We were trying to sell our house in Tennessee and really just living a simplified life. And so it was amazing to think, again, that feels like a different person. Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Because here we are now, um, some of the things are similar because we have just moved to Georgia. We're adjusting to a new house, though. Bryce has just taken a new job, and I'm settling a home again. And really, the things that are on my mind are still my kids. My oldest now is married. My son, Grant, is now a freshman in college. And then I've got a 10th grader and an 8th grader. It seems similar, but it also feels like a different person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that sounds like a really different person. I mean, to be living somewhere different, to have all your kids be in different stages, your husband has a different job, like so much has changed for you in two and a half years. Well, Mindy, I noticed in that first question, you had asked us to think about like, what did you spend your time thinking about? If you had to just sum it up, mm-hmm. how has that changed? What was the main thing that you were focus- focusing on back then and then now? Wow. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty simple, but complex, I guess. And the things that I was really thinking about then, though, some of the details are the same, like settling and, you know, Mm -hmm. thinking about my kids still, and no matter what stage they're in, you're going to keep thinking about your kids. But back then I remember being so worried about, um, how, Abby was without us. Like my first child had Mm. just left our home and I didn't know if we were going to be okay. Um, I didn't know what it was going to be like to live in a different part of the country. I was so concerned with, with that transition. And so now ironically, even though now two kids have left our home and we've just got two left, I have a little bit more freedom from thinking about like, are we going to be okay in this next stage? Cause I feel like <laughs> you have to almost go through that as a parent to see like your first kid leave. And then you're like, Oh, okay. Like we, we survived. And yeah. in fact, it's actually really good. Um, she's doing great. And so, um, maybe now a little halfway less there in trepidation about, um, these next stages in life. 
because that one felt really hard. Um, yeah. So it's nice to be on this side of it, even though we're adjusting to a new place again. I know I can't control everything. So I'm still learning that, but I also know that, if that makes sense. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hmm Well, Julie, what is your life then versus now? Well, I was a brunette back then. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. I forgot about that. Yes. My biggest exterior change. (laughs) Um, My kids were 20, 24, and 26, and I had one child graduating from college that year and one transitioning from community college to four-year college. Um, We had celebrated 30 years of marriage. Um, and I just remember things rocking along like I thought they should, Mm. you know, and, um, my biggest thought I think during that time was what am I going to do with the rest of my life? (laughs) Mm. Mm -hmm. That's what I got up and thought about every day. And so this podcast came along at a good time because I was like, well, here's one thing I can do. Mm -hmm. And, um, Hey. You know, because I I kept asking, and everybody asks you this when your kids leave, is if you're going to go back to work, and right. I just didn't feel led to do that at that time, just like I still don't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I still am asking, what am I going to do with the rest of my life? And out of that, I, I think I was, um, I started doing my watercolors, I was making royal icing cookies, and thinking, oh, I can make a little business out of this, and um I even wanted to start a little travel business and doing something I really loved. And none of that really seemed to be what the answer was. Mm -hmm. But I also remember just having this wonderful feeling of total freedom. And, (laughs) you know, I love to travel. So a friend called and said, hey, can you help me drive my camper from Seattle across the country back to, to Arkansas? And I said, sure. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I hopped on a plane, drove out there, or flew out there and then drove back with her. And we just stopped along the way and saw anything we wanted to see. And that same summer, we took a trip to Europe with our, all our kids and their spouses. I think I went back to London in October. And Mm -hmm. then in November, our, my daughter and I started our, what was going to be an annual mother daughter trip. Right. And uh, we haven't haven't had to have, get, get to have one past that first year, but Mm Mm-hmm. So just this wonderful sense of freedom, like I'm free of homeschooling and parenting and, you know, right. I really wasn't, but um, I don't know. It just, it was more freedom than you were used to. Yes. And so I ran with it. <laughs> <laughs> you made the most of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, is there things that you spent your time thinking about that you spend your time thinking about now versus then? I mean, I know there are, but is there anything in particular that you want to highlight for listeners? Um, I'll save that for the worry section. Okay. Mm. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because okay. obviously my life has changed drastically. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll, I'll talk about that later. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> so how about you, Marie? Tell us about you. When I think about um, then versus now, first of all, I remember being like Julie. And I think I wake up and think about that most every day. And I still wake up and think about that most every day. What am I going to do when my kids leave? What will my life look like? And I don't know why. I think at that time, um, I had already had one child get married the year before. So I was already on that path of kids leaving. And as I looked down the path, I wondered, what will my life look like? I know that I was firmly in the mid 40s, like I was just 46. And now two and a half Mm -hmm. years later, I'm like hanging on by like my fingernails to 40s because I'm at the last one that you can be before you're 50. (laughs) And for some reason, the decade changes to me always are hard. It was hard when I turned Mm -hmm. like 29 to 30. And it was really hard when I turned 39 to 40. I mean, I can Mm -hmm. remember that Julie gave me this card when I turned 40, and I can't believe it's already been nine years. (laughs) And uh, she said, like, someday you're going to be wishing you were turning 40. And it's so true, Julie. (laughs) She needs a new card, Julie. Come on. (laughs) And I think about that every year because, of course, I don't want the alternative. But as you get older, and especially as you get ready to change decades, it forces you to think about your life and maybe life changes that are coming up. And maybe you don't want to think about those, or maybe you don't want your life to change, you know? Right. 
I don't know exactly. if you guys can relate to that at all. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. 100%. And I was thinking one of the ironic things is I'm the oldest in my family and my sister is the youngest. So she's five years younger than me and there's two brothers in between. And I think probably she's never said this, but I I have kids. So I know how younger siblings are. Younger siblings spend a lot of time thinking like, oh, I wish I was like my older sister or my older brother. I wish I was at that stage. I wish, I, wish right. I was at that point or I can't wait till I get to that point. <laughs> And now I'm like, darn, I wish it was at Lisa's age. I really want to be Lisa's age five years younger. Oh, that's so <laughs> how the tables have turned. I know. <laughs> so if you're a younger sibling, just wait. Your older sibling is going to be wishing they were you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so yeah. True. But anyways, two and a half years ago when I started, well, when we started Midlife Matters, I really partly wanted to do the podcast to figure out what is this deal with midlife? Like, how can we find some purpose or direction or something? And I feel I feel like we've explored a ton of topics, but mm-hmm. I don't know that I have like a definite pinpointed path or answer to all my questions. <laughs> I still have a million more questions, Marie. I so. know, I know. So I shared earlier that at that time I had one um, child that had gotten married, one in college, three in high school. Now, two and a half years later, I have two kids that have gotten married, one about to go off to college and only two left in high school and they're seniors. So it feels Ooh. really different, even though it's only been two and a half years. Mm-hmm. So, right. and I should, I would be remiss in mentioning this. And Julie, I know that you want to mention it too. We've both become grandmothers in the past two and a half <gasps> years, which is also a huge mm-hmm. life stage switch and right. probably contributes to my weirdness about turning 50 next year. So I don't know. Mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but those are kind of that's kind of where I was then and where I am now still searching for what will I do now it's one year away you guys one right. year <laughs> right at what age do we feel like we've grown up because we're all still saying like <laughs> Julie put it in different terms like what do I want to do with the rest of my life but I still feel like what do I want to be when I grow up I know <laughs> I know <laughs> when are we considered grown up <laughs> Maybe that's another episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit about what we used to worry about then versus what we worry about now. And, you know, I love to hear about what people worry about. It comforts me to know because if they worry about the same thing I do, then I'm like, oh, I'm not as weird as I maybe was telling myself uh-huh. I was for worrying about that. <laughs> so, right. Mindy, I know I feel like you spend the least amount of time of anybody I know worrying, but I know that there's got to be some things that you worry about. <laughs> oh, Marie, I'm very aware of all the things. <laughs> um, gosh, the things that I worried about then. Let me see if I can make a list. I remember thinking, is our Tennessee house going to sell? And um, because it it stayed on the market for a while and we couldn't buy a house up there until our house sold. And then I thought, like, we're we're ruining our daughter because we have left her in another state. Like, parents aren't supposed to leave their kids. Like, your kids are supposed to leave you. Mm, And I was mm -hmm. not okay with that. And then you mentioned the the decade change. And I turned 40 up there. Mm -hmm. Um in Pennsylvania. And it was really depressing to me. And I remember purposely not calling friends because I had to force myself to make new friends. And I have talked all about moving and I know how to move, but it doesn't make it easier emotionally to, Mm -hmm. to, like, you know what to do, but it doesn't mean that you feel okay about it. So Mm -hmm. I remember hating that I was turning 40 alone. Like Mm -hmm. I just felt, Mm -hmm. I felt more alone than I have ever felt in my life. And had I been back with my friends, I would have thrown myself a party. Like I, I I wouldn't have waited for anybody to realize I was turning 40. I would have told everyone and I would invite them all over to my house and had a big party Mm -hmm. because I, people are so important to be with. Um, and so I remember worrying just how we were going to adjust the the level, uh, just things were so different up North. Like we were, we were, immensely excited about it, but also it was very different. And Mm -hmm. so just 
can we find a good church home? Can we, you know, are we going to be able to see Abby at reasonable periods? You know, things like that. And the Lord worked all of those things out. Mm -hmm. So ironically, I feel like because we have just moved again, because life has changed again, our roles with Abby getting married, we've added, you know, our son-in-law this year, which is awesome. Grant has moved out in the past um, year and a half. And I feel like the things that I worry about are probably still on the surface the same, but I think the way I worry is different. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. (laughs) So I can still say like, those are the things that are on my mind. I still, you know, am concerned about um, thriving in a new place, finding, you know, being in a new church home, being in a new place, uh, Bryce's new job. But now I look back at the past two and a half years And all the transition we've been through and I know, or I realize more that I have no control over the thing in in life Mm -hmm. and I'm a little more okay with that, or maybe a little bit faster to surrender my plans or the things I thought or I thought things should be, um, because I've seen that things have like our dreams have been crushed, um, in the past two and a half years and the Lord has, has brought beauty from ashes, um, like with Bryce's job and, and mm-hmm. they, that. And so because of that, it's like, I, I do still worry about things. I'm not inhuman, but I also know that it may not look how I want, but it's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. Um, my timetable is a longer view instead of a shorter view. Like I know that it takes the Lord time or it takes us time to heal and for him to work out a new plan and to show you his, um, his will for your life. And so I just surrender maybe a little bit faster than mm-hmm. I did two and a half years ago, but yeah. worry still there. <laughs> well, and that's a journey that we all hope we're on. We all hope we're getting <sighs> quicker and better at surrendering our worries, you know? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. That's a definite goal. Julie, how about you? Well, I think like most moms, some of the big worries are like, Um, just seeing your kids launch into adulthood. And like I said, I had one graduating from college and one in the middle of college. And my oldest had graduated from college, but until they get that first career job, you know, Mm -hmm. you just don't feel like, oh, they're not settled yet. And and that took a while, took longer than I maybe was expecting. But, you know, he's there now. He's doing really great. He's just gotten a promotion and he's really handling responsibility uh, in the middle of a very deep hurtful loss this past year and i'm just really really proud of him and it it is it is good to see see him from the other side you mm-hmm, know mm-hmm. and that does help with your the next kids coming along you know kept coming along but um my youngest son was a chemistry major at that time and um i remember coming home from a trip and he said i don't want to be a chemistry major anymore <laughs> Mm. And he goes, I just don't like it. I'm good at it, but I don't like it. Mm-hmm. And so I thought, oh, no, like, what are, is, is this just going to be like some, I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. But he told us he already had a plan. He already had it worked out and he knew what he wanted to do. And so it's just been really fun to see him doing something that he loves. He absolutely mm-hmm. loves it. He's um, a film major and he's just getting to work on a lot of really cool projects and Mm -hmm. You know, I can just see him really light up talking about it. And it's and he's actually working in that industry, too, as he's going to school. So that's been fun. Mm -hmm. And I think, too, like another area that moms kind of feel unsettled is um, carrying on like the burden of our kids relationships. Mm -hmm. And and this may be totally wrong and sexist, but (laughs) Mm -hmm. I just kind of felt like once my kids were married, I felt like my job was more complete. Did y'all feel that way? Mm. Like, like a little more parenting had been taken off of you, even though right. they were adults. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just, um, no, I kind I of felt like, well, that. if something did happen to us, at least they have someone, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. It's just, yeah. there's just some comfort in knowing they have a family of their own. So mm-hmm. I was thinking about that and um, grateful that my daughter has that. And Back then, I was concerned about how we were going to see my daughter, and that's still kind of a hurdle. Like, it's just getting harder and harder to travel now that John's sick, and there's just so much distance, and it's harder for them to travel and us. So, that's still a concern. And um, Oh, and then 
three years ago, I specifically remember being concerned about John's health because I thought he was working too hard at a time in his career when he should be slowing down. Mm. And he would just come home so tired. And I was just so, so worried about that. And then I never, ever would have dreamed that he would have the diagnosis of pancreatic cancer. Like that was not on my radar. I was worried about him, Mm -hmm. but not, that was not what I was worried about. And we just had such little warning. I mean, it was like two days, three days of him, something not being right. And that Mm. was our warning, you know? Mm. And it's just like, he he says this a lot now, like one day you're fine until the next day you're not, you know, Mm -hmm. like everything changed on January the 19th. And I never would have dreamed that he wouldn't be working. Mm-hmm. That is just mm-hmm. such a huge change because work was such a part of who he is. Mm-hmm. He still mm-hmm. misses it. He still talks about it. He still longs to be doing that again. Um, so there's just so much uncertainty. And, you know, it was there all along. Like you said, Mindy, the lack of control is really there all along. It's whether we acknowledge it or not. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um you know, things were just rocking along like I thought they should back then. And, and now <laughs> everything is different. Right. And, you know, I still have an old fashioned paper calendar on my kitchen wall that I write things down on. And uh, now I, it's just, it's painful to turn the page. Mm. I want it to stay mm-hmm. right here. And it scares me to even put something in ink a month or so in advance, you know, like I'll, hear about something that's happening in October or November. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I just don't know what October or November will be like. I mean, Mm -hmm. um, so I just don't, I used to be such a planner Mm. and I love to be thinking about even the next year. And now I just, I don't even go there. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You know, that's planning is not something that I want to do right now. Right. Right. Well, I definitely think that, That's completely understandable. And you'll probably again get to the point where you like to plan or can plan. I think Mm. it's probably a gift right now that you are able to say, I'm just living in the moment. And I've really noticed that even over the past few months, you've been able to say that so much more. You know, Mm -hmm. like just maybe we'll go to Boston next week and maybe we won't. And either Mm -hmm. way, I'm going to be okay with it. Yeah. I definitely think there's a theme with these things that we worry about. We're all worrying about things that we really ultimately have no control over. But Mm -hmm. yet as moms, I think it's very central to our being that we feel like it's our job to worry. If we weren't worrying about these things, then we're not doing our mom job. (laughs) Someone's got to be worried about these things. Well, none of us have said we were worried about ourselves at all. No. No. Did you notice that? None of us <laughs> I mean, there was a whole episode about worrying with um, the middle. In the middle, there's that whole episode about worrying. And she can't sleep at night. And oh, the, yeah. when she can finally sleep is because she knows Mike's worrying about it. So she's yes. like, okay, good. He's worrying about it so I can sleep. Yes. That's right. She passed it off to him. She did. Yes. <laughs> Somebody has to be worrying. And I was thinking of the things that I've worried about. and. You know, a lot of it has to do with your kids, but I don't think that you, like you said, Mindy, even when your kids are older, you don't quit worrying about them. But Uh -uh. a lot of the things I worried about then are things that I am worried about now for my younger kids. Like, have I done enough? What a nebulous worry. And what in the world could I do about it now? But I worry, have I done enough in whatever area it is? It doesn't matter what area it is. I think we wonder, did we do enough? And did I do it right? <laughs> right, right. Um, and I was worried about high school things then and college things then. And I'm still worried about high school and college things. I just have new kids at that stage. Right. I was very worried. And I know that people have heard this in the podcast. Um, I was worried for a long time about saying goodbye to my oldest son. He was going to get married. And I know that I'm not alone in that worry. Listeners are going to be thinking, yeah, I'm worried about that, or I have worried about that. Two and a half years later, I can say that my drastic, terrible, worst case scenarios did not come true. And it's been okay. (laughs) 
sorry, Marie Dur- dramatic much? <laughs> <laughs> totally kidding. <laughs> You're putting words to how we feel. Go ahead. <laughs> so if you are also sharing that worry about, you know, I think we all worry about how, re- how our relationships with our adult children are going to change, yeah. whether they're just moving on to college or moving out of the house or getting their first job or getting married. Like we're always worried, like, am I still going to be in their life? what will my role be? So I think that's a, a worry that's central to all of us. Um, yeah, because vacations are different. Holidays are different. Everything yes. everything changes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And another one of my, my worries, but it was kind of just below the surface back then, was kind of the upcoming loneliness. My husband travels. I mean, last week he was gone Sunday to Friday. This week, he'll be gone Tuesday to Friday. And, you know, when you have a lot of kids in the house, you don't feel the loneliness. But when I look ahead a year, oh, I mean, seriously, I wonder how lonely I'll be just me and my dog and my cat. Like, (laughs) and again, Mindy's like, worry, are you dramatic? I have dramatic worries. It's probably not going to turn out like that. But, you're not alone. You know, I kind of feel like my career will be ending in a year and oh. he's still working, kind of, you know? Yeah. And I don't know what my new, in quotes, career will be. So right. it's a worry. Yeah. <laughs> we are all dramatic. And that makes so much sense, though, Marie. Like, <laughs> it really does. Yeah. Yeah. So, of course, when I share that worry with Steve, he's like, oh, well, come out on the road with me or we'll get a job or... Like none of those, <laughs> neither of those things really say yeah. me. Like I don't want to travel all that time, and right. I don't necessarily want to get a job just to have a job. You know, right. I don't know. I want to do something I, I love to do. I don't think you ever outgrow that feeling. Just no. like David wants to be doing something that he wants to do in film. Like <laughs> yes. even when you're our age, you want to be doing something you want to do. It's yeah. true. And then that can change. Like, you don't have to be stuck in one thing for forever. Right. right. But it's so ironic because I remember thinking what a big stage of life change I was having when all four kids finally got into school, like when Nathan became a kindergartner. Mm-hmm. And at that point, I was like, wow, like, who am I going to be? Like, this is a whole new world. All the kids are in school. And I can see that happening again mm-hmm. when my Nathan mm-hmm. graduates. I still have. Um, let's see, he'll be in eighth grade. So I still have five years, Mm -hmm. but, um, but I could see that on the horizon. And again, Marie, you go before me, Julie goes before you. And I feel like, (laughs) I do not like being the pioneer here. Nobody's (laughs) Julie, turn your flashlight out and show us what's ahead. (laughs) I know. (laughs) <laughs> help kind of along the way. I'm going blind here. I'm, not, I'm, I'm walking blindly. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> well, that kind of dovetails nicely with our next question that we had to think about was how have our goals in life changed from then to now? Goals are so hard for me, you guys. Tell me what your goals are and maybe you'll inspire me. <laughs> Gosh, I just, I have a lot of trouble with goals. I don't set goals and mm-hmm. I don't think that that, obviously I said I plan. Mm-hmm. But I guess I don't just get out a piece of paper. I don't think about them. I don't do this yearly goal setting, you know, thing. Right. And maybe it's just that I don't say things out loud. I don't know. But so the only thing I could kind of come up with this for this answer was just that right now I just try to make the most of every day, like you were saying, Marie. Uh, and that's really hard because even in the midst of like tragic circumstances, you finally get into a new routine, a new there's a new normal and a routine. So like six months ago, we were so overwhelmed by procedures and surgeries and chemo and all of this. And I wouldn't have survived without friends bringing us meals every night, you know, and, and now chemo just goes on the calendar on Mm -hmm. Tuesdays, you know, Mm -hmm. like it's just Mm -hmm. fit into the routine. And so um, there are days when I, now that we're kind of in this new normal that I look back and I realize, oh, I didn't really appreciate today. And mm-hmm. I, I didn't recognize anything special about today. And I don't want to let that happen. Like I kind of start to feel a little guilt, mm. um, like I don't want to waste these days. And it's hard once you've kind of, it's easy kind of in the turmoil of things. But when you're just back to status quo, 
I don't know. It's just hard to keep that up. You know, like right. when life's mm-hmm. great, it's just hard to k- keep it up. The whole gratitude and thinking about every special moment. And it really hit me this last July 4th because I was kind of having a little pity party that we weren't going to be out on a lake on our boat. We weren't going to be sailing somewhere you know, like your typical 4th of July things. We Mm -hmm. weren't going to have a big family gathering because our family's not all here and we don't do that. And, and John hadn't been feeling great. So I thought, Oh, I don't know. We just maybe should do nothing, you know? (laughs) And then I thought, no, I'm not going to do that. So I invited some friends over for just a dinner and John had kind of perked up that day. Like he was just himself. He was very present at the dinner and he didn't want to go to fireworks because he thought he, it might just be too much. So the wives of the group all walked over to the fireworks. And when I got back, John was still awake talking to one of the husbands, like at 1030. Mm. And he just kept saying, like, thank you for tonight. It was so great. It was so oh, great. Wow. And I just remember, like, this sounds kind of cliche, but gratitude is the key to like, I just was so thankful. I just kept saying, God, thank you for tonight. Like, this was the most wonderful Fourth of July. And it and we didn't do any of the things that would make it grand, mm, but right. just that he was present and felt like being with friends for mm-hmm. one night. Mm-hmm. And so that was, you know, it just was so different than the night I expected because I was kind of just expecting him to not feel good and maybe have to go to bed and it would just be me, mm-hmm. you know, entertaining. And so it was just a really neat treat <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. yeah that's unexpected a, yeah, yeah great testimony julie i love that mindy are you better than julie and i at setting goals i know well, she I, is. <laughs> I feel like i'm the worst like i totally resonate with julie when she's like i'm not a goal setter um i have always been a rebel when it comes to goals i'm like i almost have to trick myself into um doing something new in my life because mm-hmm. i i just think if i don't care about it then I'm going to quit. Like, and I don't really care about it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it takes the right circumstances for me to meet a goal. Um, and so, but when I think about more of my ideals, I guess, if I were to change the, my goals to like what my ideals were mm-hmm. at that time when we first started, um, I really put a lot of emphasis on the structure of a home And I just felt like at that time, um, if all of my kids were settled in school and we had a place that was our home base that they could come and go from, um, that everything would be so much better. Um, Like I I remember thinking that my ideal was for Bryce to be able to have a great job and us to have this beautiful home. And I just, it's so ironic because things just kind of kept going more south and more south the longer we were up Mm. north and with COVID hitting and everything um, with the hospital system we were with. It just, it was rough and it really was like coming to the end of yourself. Um, And you guys know my testimony, you know how much I've moved. And again, I'll just say that my home base, the physical place has changed a lot in my life. I've, I'm not necessarily okay with that. Um, but I know that the Lord has used that to keep me on a very tight leash. Now, my ideals, my goals, I find that they're more based on people than the structure of the home. Um, I find that the relationships in our life are such a treasure that those are the things that I value and I hold on to more. We've moved into a beautiful new home in Georgia, and I do love it. I love being here. I love settling our house. And so I I hope to have that nice home base. But seriously, I don't know how long we're going to be here. Mm -hmm. Um, But we've made friends quickly. We're continuing to cultivate older friendships that, that we have along the way. And I just feel like it's just on relationships. Because had you told me we would be here two and a half years ago, I would have not not believed you. I, Mm -hmm. I would have had no idea that we would have transitioned so many times. Um, and so it's again, very short leash. My plans were squashed. Here I am. And it's all about the people. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) Well, and you know, it's really good what you said. I think in another, another way of saying it would be like having a mentality of if, if we just 
whatever, if we just had, or if we just were, or if, Mm -hmm. you know, and often that thing is not what is satisfying, you know, and sometimes Mm -hmm. it takes not having it to to realize that wasn't the answer all along. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about we've what we've lost and what we've gained in these past two and a half years. Something silly and thankful that I have lost, but then I look on it with a little bit of nostalgia, but I have lost being the primary driver of my kids. Over the last two and a half years, everybody has learned to drive and what a transition it is. Wow. But it is beautiful, you guys. Just beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> That's <after Marie. laughs> That's where I am glad I'm five years ahead. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> it really is fun. And, you know, I mean, it's not beautiful when you keep on getting multiple car repair bills, but it is beautiful when you don't have to make so many runs everywhere and they can stop at the grocery store for themselves or for you. So those are both. That's great. <laughs> um, You know, what I've gained, I had a new son-in-law when we started it, but since then I've gained a new daughter-in-law, I've gained a granddaughter, I've Mm. gained a dog, if you guys can believe it. (laughs) Still can't. Still shocked. Yeah. (laughs) What I've lost, oh, well, I've lost kids, you guys, but I've already talked about that. Like, those are probably my biggest things. And I haven't lost kids. I've lost, like, some of my role. I've lost maybe, you know, just my routine, maybe, you know, just the way we felt because they lived in the home versus out of the home. And, like, this summer, as we're coming up on 150 episodes, my biggest loss will be my senior son going to college. And it is sad. Like, Mm -hmm. I was in church yesterday morning, and I thought, oh, two more Sundays and we move Isaac in. And then I started crying in church. Like, I wasn't crying at home, but there was something about the music and just everything just made me cry. Mm -hmm. And in your mind, you just see, like, hearing that you're pregnant and then them as a baby and them as a toddler and them as an element. And it's like all these memories just flood. And it's like, where in the world did mm-hmm. the time go? So, yeah. you know, that feels like a loss. I know it's really just a change, but it does mm-hmm. feel like a loss. So right. that's where I yeah. am as we record this then versus now. <laughs> oh, yeah. How about you guys? Um, Marie, I, that, that hits so close to home because the things I've lost, I'll start, I'll start negative maybe so I can end on the positive. (laughs) (laughs) Um, the things I've lost control, um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) of all things. Um, I still grasp for it though. I mean, I'm still stubborn that way, but I've lost control. I've lost addresses, uh, Three, in fact, three addresses <laughs> I've lost in the past two and a half years. We lost a job. Um, we lost our identity in that job, mm-hmm. in the season of looking for a job. It's amazing um, how you wrap your identity up in either your career or your husband's career. Or it, it, you know, that's one of the first questions people ask is, what do you do? And we so often base our value on that. And so it was really humbling hard. I was angry about it, about losing that identity, about losing those addresses. And so all of that made me lose control. And Mm. so Mm -hmm, (laughs) mm -hmm. in a sense, like you really do have to come to the end of yourself before I can go into my next list of the things that I've gained. Um, Practically speaking, I've gained another state. Um, I'm back in the state of Georgia, which I've lived twice before. I've gained a new house that I'm settling and I'm super excited about and I need help with. So we need to do an episode on decorating new homes. Okay. Um, Let's see. I have gained freedom from planning too far in the future. That's something Julie mentioned, but maybe just, you know, I'm in a different stage than Julie. So just um, freedom from knowing, like, I I would like to tell you that we're going to be in this house for the rest of our lives. Mm, mm-hmm. And I know that that's not true. Um, well, actually, you know, I just don't know. Mm-hmm. And I 
<laughs> I've been shown too many times that that's not how it is. And so, um, my plans are, are few there. So I've gained, and I'll call that freedom because I can't, I can't necessarily plan for that. I've gained new friends. I've gained a fabulous, handsome, wonderful son-in-law, Joseph, whom we love. And now my younger boys ask if Abby will bring Joseph over and, and say that she can stay home because they want to play with Joseph. Mm-hmm. And I just love that. I love that we've gained a new son. Um, I feel like we have experienced adoption almost in a way, like we've brought him in and he's a full part of our lives. Um, So I've gained just joy at Bryce's new position, um, joy at this new hospital, a new community, um, this new season. One of the things I forgot to mention is just, it was hard, but when we moved from Knoxville to here, when Bryce got the job in Georgia, we had to leave Grant. And I thought, here I go again, leaving my kid. Mm -hmm. Like we had already left Abby though. She was like 11 hours away. But when I realized, Marie, we were sitting in church and that just brought back the flood of memories that I had um, just maybe two months ago. I had been so focused on Abby's wedding and so focused on the new house and moving that I'm standing there and it's like somebody slapped me in the face. And I realized we had one week left in Knoxville. And I thought, when we go to Abby's wedding and when we, when we move, that means I'm leaving Grant. Mm-hmm. And I hadn't mm-hmm. dealt with that. Mm-hmm. Literally. Then I just started crying and I had been so happy. And then all of a sudden I'm grieving. And so life is that way. Like you gain things, but you have to leave things behind to sometimes gain the things that you have. And so it's a muddle of emotions and it's joy and it's sadness and it's grief and it's, and it's celebrations. And so, um, these lost and gained lists are interesting because some of them really go hand in hand. And some of them couldn't have happened without the other. Yeah, definitely. So much in two and a half years. <laughs> so much. How about you, Julie? Well, um, I'll start with the losses. Um, I would say I've lost my plans. I've lost a sense of control. I've lost certainty. Not in everything, but in mm-hmm. a lot. <laughs> Um, I've lost a sense of self-sufficiency and I think God must laugh at that list. Like I ever had any of that, Mm, you know, mm -hmm. for real, (laughs) but, um, just recognizing that those losses, um, I've lost a relationship with someone, um, that was painful and, but I will say that I have not lost hope. So that's mm. a not a thing I have not mm-hmm. lost. <laughs> and I have gained a beautiful, sweet grandson named Ezra. He's just amazing. And I've gained deeper friendships. Uh, I have friends going through unbelievably hard things mm. at the same time as what I'm going through. And oh I just, I know that's not a coincidence. Um, and I know that that's, that we're able to be, be there for each other. I'd like to say I've gained some resiliency. I'm almost afraid to say that because I don't want that to be tested. Mm, <laughs> it's like, you know, I think like, I've gained patience. Uh, no, you haven't. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> right. But you know how when you, I don't know, when you fear your worst case scenario, you just think, well, I couldn't, mm-hmm. I couldn't do that, you know, and I, and I have. And I would say I've gained a greater awareness of God's presence and goodness in my life and in our lives. So um, that's been a good thing. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. So, a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that kind of ties in with how we've changed personally over this period of time. You know, we've obviously all experienced a lot of personal changes, both like within our family and within ourselves. And are we happy like with who we are today? Julie, mm-hmm. I feel like you've probably like changed personally the most because I don't think that you can go through a pancreatic cancer diagnosis of your husband without just everything being touched and almost Mm -hmm. like ravished inside yourself. Yeah. And it's hard to know like how you're going to ultimately handle things. So it's, it's kind of scary to even say, you know, Mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm doing fine, you know, but like I said, we're in this new routine. And, but I think what I thought about with this question was just that 
I pray that I change. I pray that I keep changing. I, I don't want yeah. to be the same person. And as mm -hmm. a kind of as a recovering perfectionist, um, you know, don't you just hate to see like that you deal with the same issues over and over and over again? Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to give myself grace that I have improved. I am making progress. But right. um, that is just my prayer is that I don't want to be the same person in three years. And I'm not the same person I was three years ago. And, you know, just a tiny example, like I'm trying to learn to put myself out there a little more, like in, um, in more uncomfortable situations out of my comfort zone, even in really tiny ways, because I think that's how you change. And that's how you overcome, like, kind of like when you go to the gym, you expect your body to change mm -hmm. right? and, and grow and feel different and look different. And you know, I thought if I'm anxious about things in the future, I got to put myself out there. Mm -hmm. And sadly, I think our own culture, our culture says retreat to a safe space. You know, like that's what you see a lot like in, mm. on, in the university campuses, like retreat. And I thought, what kind of person does that make if you retreat to a safe space every time something's hard or makes you anxious? Right. I don't think that's what I want to do. I don't want to be a retreater. I want to be right. somebody who's going to face things head on. And because I, I only have two choices, face it or curl up at a ball mm -hmm. <laughs> right. and retreat. And and that one won't have the best outcome for me. Right. Um, so even though I don't know what that looks like, I just know that that's what that's what I'm striving for. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mindy, how about you? Are you? I know you're personally changed. Are you happy with where you are then versus now? Um, <laughs> I, it's so funny because I was like, how have I changed? I was like, well, I know less now than I did then. <laughs> 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 I, I definitely am less certain about the things that I know, but I'm more certain about who God is. As I pondered that, I was like, well, I know that I have less control, but I, I do feel like one of the, the things that I have seen grow in my life is gratitude. Anytime we're faced with anxiousness or fear or worry um, over a situation, both real and things that are unreal in our minds, um, that I feel like one of those things to combat it is true worship of the Lord. Is um, And worship is not just singing a song. But it's an act of surrender, and it's it's realizing who God is and realizing that you're not him, because I know that over the past two and a half years, like i I mentioned, you know, some of the dreams I had are gone. But now there's new things on my plate. And so, um similar to Julie, some a conversation I was having with my two older children was that I kind of thought at this point in my life, I would be more stable. Like I thought I would have been in the same place and have friends for a long time and be in the same church and, and have recurring activities that are similar, you know, like traditions. And I've never been fortunate enough to have that in my life for longer than five years. So I really thought by the time I was 40, that that would have happened. Like I would be there mm -hmm. and, um, and I'm not. And so I realized the beauty of that though, is that, the Lord is still molding me. He's still cutting off the rough edges. He's still showing me my own sin and uh, giving me grace to change. I'm just more willing to surrender and worship and, and be grateful for the things that he is doing and has done. And my journal is so full of thankfulness of trying to see the things that he's doing, even when I feel like I'm losing in some sense or some, some way. The conversation I was having with Abby and Grant um, is that I would have thought my life would have been a certain way. However, I realized that God is more loving than that, than to let us stay right where we are for the rest of our lives. That our life doesn't end at 40. It's new. It's still You still have a lot of life to live. And so the Lord can do a new work in us. And I want to be a constant learner. I want him to continue to show me the, my rough edges and smooth those out. I want him to continue to have a new plan. And I want to follow him there. You hear about the grandparents that go on the mission field. And I think, why would, you know, why would you do that? Like, why, mm -hmm. why would you leave your 
I mean, I have left my kids, but <laughs> why would you leave your grandkids? You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you like, that's the time in life you think, oh, you want to settle and bake pies and have your grandkids over. And I, that sounds fabulous to me. I would love that life. But then you hear about these rogue Christians that go out on the mission field in their 50s and 60s and 70s. And you're like, who is that? How do they have the bravery and the courage to continue to do that? Like, that the, they're not the grumpy old person sitting in the pew saying, that's not the way we've always done it. Like, I want to be the person that's mm. like, well, let's try something new. And so I think that's one of the biggest things that have changed is um, the Lord is still using us and I cannot determine who he's going to make me. Mm -hmm. He determines that. And, um, and it's exciting and scary all at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I kind of feel the same way, Mindy, except I just said it a little bit differently. You know, I've I've said and Julia's joked and and I've joked that um, you know, then I was waking up and personally wondering what my life would be like and now I'm still doing that, but I also know that even just watching what's happened over the last two and a half years, that God gives you the answers when you need them. He didn't lay out his plan for the next two and a half years. When I started this podcast, and he's not laying out the next two and a half years when we do episode number 150. Mm -hmm. Every day, <laughs> yeah, every day I have to trust that he does have a plan and right. that, you know, I have a place and a role and a job and something that he wants me doing, and he's going to show me when I get there, you know. So right. <laughs> that's right. kind yeah. of the theme of of this episode maybe is just that yeah. we didn't know what we were doing then and we still don't know what we're going to do <laughs> in the no, future, no. but we know that we're supposed to trust. <laughs> well, I wanted to share something earlier and I forgot it. And I think this would actually be the perfect place to, okay. to put it. Mm -hmm. um, I have a friend who's Catholic and she sends me um, readings and prayers and things that Catholics say, and this is called the surrender novena. And just every day they ask you to, to pray, Jesus, I surrender everything to you, take care of everything. And that has been such a helpful prayer. I think I might have even mentioned it when John got his diagnosis. Like there were days where that's all I could mm. say was mm. you just have to take care of everything because I can't I can't manipulate any of this. I can't control it. But each each time you pray that or on a, on a different day, I think it's like 10 days or nine days. And it said one of the prayers said. When I must lead you on a path different from the one you see, I will prepare you. I will carry you in my arms. I will let you find yourself like a child who's fallen asleep in their mother's arms on the other bank of the river. What troubles you and hurts you immensely is your reasoning, your thoughts, and your worry, and your desire at all mm -hmm. costs to deal with what afflicts you. And I just loved that image because don't you remember as a kid, like you might have been at a friend, uh, your parents were at a friend's house and you fell asleep. Your mm -hmm. parents picked you up and you were, you woke up in your bed mm -hmm. and you didn't know yes. how you got there. You just know that you were carried. And I right. thought that's such a beautiful picture. Like, I don't know how I've gotten here from three years ago and I don't know how I'm going to get, I don't know right. what it's going to look like in three years, but I know I will be carried. Mm. And I thought that was just a really pretty picture that I just try to keep in my mind. Mm -hmm. mm. It's very comforting. It's so beautiful. Mm-hmm. Listeners, we hope that the things that you guys have seen us go through or heard us go through over the last 150 episodes, and I hope you'll stick around for the next 150 episodes, but always our continual goal from then to now is to be real and to be honest and also to shine a light of hope. Like we never want to leave listeners feeling discouraged or mm -hmm. like... We're, we want them to feel happy that they listen to the podcast, not like, oh, I feel really down. <laughs> and if you're still in the stage like I am, that Marie and Julie were bragging about being out of, and you're still driving your kid everywhere like I am, then maybe you can laugh along with us in that stage of life right now yes. and listen to our podcast. Yes. And Julie and I can be the annoying ones who say, enjoy it. Enjoy <laughs> it. it. It goes so fast. Enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it really does go fast. But you know, always every single stage I dread leaving, there's always good parts about the next one. Yeah. And I don't know when I'm ever going to get to the point where I just 
believe that about my next stage. <laughs> Julie, mm-hmm. am I going to get to that point? <laughs> You're asking the wrong person right now. <laughs> <laughs> Listeners, send in your wisdom for us. We always need a word of wisdom. And I know we have people even further down the road who listen to us and think, you guys, you don't know anything yet. Just you wait. Send us your wisdom. We want to know. <laughs> <laughs> we, obviously, we need help. <laughs> Listeners, we don't have time for I'm a Fan, but we hope you'll join us next week and we'll have some new recommendations for you. I just read a great book and I know that I'm always looking for new shows. Mindy's always got some makeup tips. And Julie, I feel like you post a new recipe every other day. So (laughs) join us next week to catch up on all that we're a fan of. (gasps) Julie, Mindy, it was great talking with you this week. Yeah. Great to talk to you both. Thanks for being honest. It's good to hear you guys. Yeah, it's encouraging, encouraging to me. Yes, yes it's encouraging to yes. me too. All right, we'll talk to you next week. Bye. 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 We're so happy you joined us today. You can find the show notes for this episode at midlifematterspodcast.com. Also, please tell a friend about the show and help them hit the free subscribe button on their favorite podcast app. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at Midlife Matters Podcast. That's where we post pictures and stories about all the things we talk about in each episode. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.